Welcome back, everyone, to Vox Markets. I'm delighted once again to be joined by Jason Drummond, CEO of MedPal AI, who have just announced a significant milestone, a new state-of-the-art distribution centre now online. Investors and patients alike are eager to understand the strategic vision driving this transformation. Jason, good morning to you. Good morning, Martin. So let's dig into this. I mean, can you talk us through the, um, you know, the details of this RNS? Yeah, well, um, it's it's actually a pretty exciting announcement. We uh, it's really a follow up to um, the announcement uh, recently about the acquisition of uh, the assets of Universal Pharmacy. Um, as we've stated before, our, our goal is uh, really trying to make um, uh, give everyone access to instant, low cost uh, healthcare and medication um, through MedPal and through the MedPal app. So that's really our intention. This really is a big part of that. Um, Part of the deal, we 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 effectively had a, a unit, a one unit, uh, the Kitchik Business um, Park. Uh, what we've done, we've just expanded that three times, um, and we've just basically um, uh, implemented uh, the installation of some uh, uh, some robots, <laughs> which are these are advanced uh, robotic dispensing systems. Um, uh, so yeah, so we've now got a sort of state of, state of the art AI powered national distribution centre, which enables us to uh, follow through on. Our strategy is saying of giving everyone instant low cost access to healthcare medication. Yeah, well, when I was reading it earlier, I've I sort of got a vision in my head of when you see these sort of Amazon warehouses with robots running around. I mean, I suppose that's it. What I find interesting, though, uh, you don't mind me saying, is this uh, DSP licenses. I mean, this is a distribution uh, selling pharmacies, isn't it? And um, I'll they don't they no longer issue these so i mean it sounds like you've got a little bit of a regulatory moat around yourselves here um is this giving you some sort of long-term competitive advantage yes exactly so um we've seen changes in the way that that uh, pharmacies work specifically through the pandemic and uh obviously move towards online um the uh the gphc it was the pharmaceutical council stopped issuing these dsp licenses in june in 2025 so they're immensely valuable it enables us to basically supply a medication uh, anywhere in the uk from a central distribution point um so it's a, a fantastic thing to have it's a, a great benefit to MedPal, and you can't get them anymore so you know if you want one you've got to go and buy a company that's got one there you are. And then you, you said it mentioned in the announcement there's a hundred you're targeting a hundred thousand prescriptions a month. I mean, how does that sort of target translate into revenue or sort of margin growth for yourselves? Well, that's a really good question. So based on the uh um uh, the advice from the companies that are installing the robotic systems, the facility used to run up to about 25,000 prescriptions a month. I think we mentioned that previously in, in the previous uh, announcements or the information was in the public domain. Um, with the integration of the uh, expanding the unit plus uh, the robots, we can deliver in excess of 100,000 prescriptions per month. Um, to put that in perspective, if you're doing um, uh, prescriptions around NHS and, and so on, you typically earn at least... 10 pounds per prescription so you know it gives you an idea of the, the sort of money that you can put through this one facility um you know it's, it's it's significant um and if we're running multiple shifts again potentially we can increase the the number of uh, prescriptions per month so it gives you a bit of an idea for for the amount of revenue we can drive through this facility so this could well become a sort of uh 24 7 operation but then you know are, are people actually going to be ordering things at three four o'clock in the morning or is, is it just uh, sort of b2b or is there a b2c involved here as well yeah well it's interesting you said we, we were approached last week i was at a, a trade um uh event last week where a number of people approached us uh, specifically once they understood that we have this distribution capability um there are other people offering maybe elements of tele telehealth solutions but they don't have the actual the distribution uh to go with that um that's really really uh, you know, quite exciting so I, I think that could happen in the future but certainly this is around our consumer uh, business supplying uh, prescriptions um uh, weight loss medication these type of things through the medpal um app so i'm slightly curious i suppose because you know you've got medpal it's a lifestyle app and you know uh, everything so and you've mentioned in uh, you've mentioned a couple of times now you know distribution of sort of the glp1 weight loss medications and things like that so are you positioning yourself as sort of one of these lifestyle therapies as your main revenue driver or are you going to be sticking with a sort of broader primary care facility 
Well, I think firstly, the, the whole uh, kind of uh, weight loss, um, and if you, you probably see it in most of the newspapers talking a lot about it, two and a half million people in the UK, it's 4% of the adult population is uh, on the GLP-1. Um, some of the results people are getting are pretty spectacular, around 20% weight loss is is not unusual. In fact, is is is, is typical. Um it's estimated that twenty five percent of the UK adult population is obese, uh, so obviously that that is a you know is a market that's growing. It's it's already uh, uh, five hundred million pounds uh, a month, uh, so it'd be it'd be you know it's a great opportunity for MedPal. Also, bearing in mind in terms of approaching this in a very ethical way, MedPal is a very unique position because we the app already collects all of your health data. We already collect your data from your you know from your connected health device like your weighing scales your uh, your Apple Watches, your Fitbits, your Aura Ring. So we actually come from a very interesting position because one of the few companies in the market that gets the real data. So we can not only um, make sure that when it's being prescribed uh, and and the way the platform works is we uh, we have what we call um, sort of humans in the in the in the loop. These are basically. Uh, uh, um, uh, independent uh, uh, dispensers and um, uh, prescribers and GPs who who actually ultimately um, approve the the the, um, the the prescriptions, um, but we have all that data, so we can actually support you on that kind of weight loss journey. We can also see how it's working. We can see through the scales how the weight's coming off, and also more importantly, how your body's changing in terms of muscle mass and making sure that you're losing fat, not not muscle. So I think we're coming at it in a very very uh, you know, a different way, very different to anyone else in the market. So I think that's going to be, you know, pretty, pretty exciting. But so it's not just about uh, just about weight loss. That's just a huge opportunity right now. Um, we already stock thousands of different medications. So, for example, if you um, go onto your NHS account, you can actually uh, nominate MedPal and Universal to receive your prescription. So it, whenever you go to the GP, rather than having to go through the whole rigmarole of uh, um, calling up your GP, for example. Um, and uh, making an appointment, waiting a few days, getting an appointment, you know, taking time off work, going to see your GP, then they basically allocate your prescription. Uh, and then you have to end up going either through, well, you can go through MedPal, obviously, but if you were going to say a uh, high street uh, dispensary, it takes up a lot of time. This is just going to make that so much easier. Everyone is going to have instant access to low cost healthcare and medication. Uh, and you could nominate, for example, MedPal, Universal, um, for all of your f- prescriptions, not just from us, but also from a GP. Great stuff. So this new facility then, um, is this going to be like a single site model or is this the first step in a sort of network of national hubs? Well, firstly, the license means we can sell um, across the whole United Kingdom. Um, There is some benefits to having different DSP distribution centres across the UK. Uh, It enables us to, for for example, offer same day as well as next day uh, deliveries. You talked about, you know, a 24-7 automation. Does that really make sense? What's interesting is that, you know, the world's changing with the whole, you know, the, the the analogy of Amazon is quite interesting because, you know, it is, you know, trying to become like an, the Amazon of healthcare is maybe one of our one of our goals. But, you know, people are busy. Uh, you know, young people are working all day. They haven't got time to go to GPs. They may want to basically uh, uh, contact, you know, go on to MedPal in the evenings. We're going to have give you access to uh, health professionals um, well into the evening. And obviously it, it, we can then basically do the dispensing at night on the robots. And then we could put the, those prescriptions onto our vehicles and vans and send them into central London. So literally when you go to the office in the morning, you should be able to go and pick up your, your medication on the way to work at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning. So we, 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 you know, it's all about the user. It's all about making the user experience easier, doing something that doesn't exist right now. Yeah, I think that'd be great because very often you can feel yourself a bit crook, you know, going to bed at night and you know you're going to be ill in the morning. It'd be great just to press a button and have your uh, whatever <laughs> uh, dosage of cold medicine you need in the morning at your doorstep. That'd be fantastic. I suppose one of the other things that concerns me here is, I suppose, with these all always these operations, Jason, is is sort of operational resilience. I mean, you know, you, you've got a, a significant tech stack involved there and you've got AI triage, you've got, you know, robotic dispensing, you've got all logistics. Where do you see the greatest risk or is it a bottleneck operationally that you can look at that concerns you at all? Well, well I think what's interesting about the technology, if you look at the statistics, um, you're much more likely to get mistakes made by, unfortunately, human beings in terms of dispensing. The robots are incredibly uh, accurate in terms of uh, uh, dispensing. Um, 
if you think about the actual AI triage, I'm not really uh, you know wanting to take anything away from GPs and buy independent prescribers, but the the reality is the triage has been trained on on all the medical information which is available out there. We have these uh, government directives. Um, the PGDs, which uh, which we follow around how you should go through a process of asking all the right questions to make sure that um, that you're actually dispensing the the, the right medication to the, in, in the right way, and obviously ultimately we're bringing in um, these sort of experts in the loop to then make sure and just check everything is okay. So the point being that, that the robots and the AI are doing a lot of the the legwork, um, and you bring the professionals at the last minute to then so they can really focus on making sure the advice is good and that they're happy with it and and prescri- prescription. So the way to look at it is rather having just the, the advice of one GP, you're getting, you know, the AI triage MedPals app gives you access to equivalent thousands of GPs to make sure you have the most, uh, the best, best answer to your, to your medical questions. Well, Jason, thank you very much for your time again this morning. It's been fascinating listening to you. I'm looking forward to the next announcement. Thank you, Martin. Cheers.